Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. A goofy movie is one of the best movies to come out of its time period. It was actually like a movie. It wasn't just like a children's movie and didn't pander to children. It was about a father-son relationship and a son wanted to spread his wings and the father wanted to keep him as a child. And it's a great movie to go back and it holds up really well. Well, currently we have a board game based on it called a Goofy Movie The Board Game. And in this game, they're going to twist things a little bit. Instead of just being the father-son, the other characters in the show will also be out taking pictures and set collecting and managing their hand in order to get across to uh, the concert that you want to see. And the movie, you wanted to see it because you wanted to impress a girl. And this time, everybody's trying to get there to get the most points. That's a little bit off. But I like the little thing where you're playing the cards and you're, okay, so who's going to go first and what color? You want to get a different color? You're trying to guess what everybody else is going to do. It is a little bit random, I guess, a little bit luck-filled, but it works in its aspect and it's not a roll-in move. There are times where you roll a dice to move uh, the, the singer down the track, and that's fine. I think that works appropriately for what it is. There are decisions on which way to go and what you're going to collect. And once you start collecting things, you're going to be trying to get more of those. And that will come in the first part of the hand management, but also when you go to the different locations. It does hold up the theme fairly well, I suppose, as you're moving across the country to get to the concert. That part of the game is intact from the movie. It's weird that like all the characters are doing it separately. Goofy's kind of across the top as an NPC, getting you access to cards, etc. It's kind of weird in that, in that retrospect, but... That what you see, the colors, the miniatures, everything is here from the game. And I think that works fine for what it is. As for the game itself, I find it to be a very short, very quick playing board game that sits on the board and you can go through it. It's going to work really well for those with nostalgic about the time period and about this movie. So it's going to be a light mainstream type of board game that's going to work great. Now, if you're a gamer gamer family... And you're playing this. Is this going to appeal to you? Yeah, I think so on the lighter scale. And the kids will like this as long as they're somewhat familiar with the movie. But this is a great package. Like, watch the movie and play the game. This is one of the ones I actually quite like. It's been a family favorite. We've had a lot of good times with it. And one I can recommend to you as a keeper. There is a goofy movie game. Very striking color. Very colorful with all the people in the background. Then you're going to have a rule book, which we'll take a look at in a few minutes. I should say the inside of the cover, too. It's kind of cool. It's like goofy-esque, if you ask me. And then you're going to have a nice board. Now, there's a lot of cool artwork on the back of this board, which is like almost like a power line, like, um, what would you call it? Like a poster for him, which is kind of cool. You won't ever see it because you'll be looking at this side of the board, which shows the trip they went on with different spots, etc. here for them. It's very nice. Now, the box, you know... There's not a lot in here, to be honest. You're going to get some tokens, and these are very nice quality. These will all have, like, scoring bonuses, etc. that you'll have. You are going to have quick references that will be available. So those are your player aids. And then inside of here, you're going to have a bunch of miniatures. So these miniatures are really cool. You're going to have the four playing pieces. So you're going to have his buddy. You're going to have Goofy, which will be on track. Power line, which is really cool. And then you're going to have uh, Max and the girl. So you're going to have um, all of these in little paper. And they, they have different bases on them too, which is kind of nice. This is really cool. Then you're going to have your goofy dice. And this will be a big, giant dice that you'll be going. That's all you're going to get in here, really. It's not a whole lot to it. The components that are here are very good. I mean, the fact that this price point, you're getting these miniatures. The cards are all good stock. So you're going to have the cards you're going to have in your hand of the different characters, which are small and they have different colors and numbers on them, so those work just fine. Then you're going to have the scrapbook, which you'll, this will be what you'll be set collecting. You can easily see what it is and how its scores will be here down here at the bottom. So it feels very good. The components are very nice. I didn't have any complaints about them whatsoever. So here's the rule book for a goofy movie game. You can see a picture of the cover. On this sheet over here, you're going to have a picture of set up with... Uh, numbers delineating where things go and then the how to play this will be the breakdown right here you have full colors with examples which work great on the back you'll have how the game ends and then the end of the game scoring how that goes there very easy to understand not a lot of problems when you're playing this game i didn't have any questions everything flowed really smoothly and i was able to read this in about 10 minutes and be up and running 
setup is going to be very easy. You're going to put a Goofy on its first Goofy spot. They're going to put out four scrap cards after shuffling the deck and put the remaining there. You're going to shuffle up these tiles and put two on each of these spaces that kind of have the outlying symbol. And everybody will choose a character, grab a set of their 12 cards, shuffle these up, and deal four of these to be their starting hand. And everybody will start here on the spot that says start. Power line will start down here. The game ends when Power Lion gets to the end and he gets all the way to Los Angeles. And this will be a timer for the game. When he is there, everybody else gets another turn and then the game will end. You'll divvy up who has scored the most points and the most points will be the winner of the game. Each player will have a hand of four cards. You will choose one of these cards, which you will play face down. And when everybody's done, they will reveal their card at the same time. So if you end up with a situation like this, you will... Uh, have uh, pink, maybe two blues, and an orange. So then you go down this list. So you look at blue. So you look at the two blue cards. Whoever has the highest number will gain the card. So she will gain the card in this respect, and a new card will come out. Then you'll do the pink one, which is only one card. So he'll get that card, and then a new card will immediately come out. And then you will look at the orange one. He will grab this card, and a new card will come out. And nobody will grab the green because nobody played a green card. These will all go. Now, we will move across the board based on whoever played the lowest number. So in this case, it will be 6, 8, 8, and 9. So the lowest card is a 6. That means Max will go first. At the bottom, it tells you he will move one space. So put that card in his discard spot, and he will move one space. In this regard, he can move onto a yellow or a die. I'll come back to that in a second. If there's a tie, you will go based on the color of the card. Blue will go first, then pink, orange, and green is also set up then. So the blue card, she will go next, moving a spot. Now, she could go here because it's one spot, or she could move uh, over here. So you don't count the space that somebody's already at. So she would move up to that space. And then he would go next, also moving one space. And he could go all the way up here if he wanted to, skipping over the spots, or he could go down through here. Let's say he went there. And the last one is also to move one spot. Some of these will have two spots on them. And maybe he wants to move here, not going the same direction as anybody else. Now, when you land on a space, you will get the goodie that's underneath it. So if you land on a colored balloon, you simply, in this case he took a blue, you will simply take the card of that color, adding it to your set collection, and a new card will come out. You will do that immediately when you move. If it's a die location, as you see there, you will simply roll the die. If you roll a power line sign, power line will move up one space. This will progress the game to its natural conclusion. If you land on a Goofy, or say you roll this, in this case you'd move power line two spaces, one, two, and you have the Goopy, which means you would get the card that Goofy is on, whatever space he is on, and then... Goofy will move up to the next space. So this would be the next Goofy space that would be available. If you were to land on one of these spaces, you get to look at both of them and take whatever you want. These will give you additional scoring opportunities. This one says plus two points per camera or plus two points per microphone. So those are things you can do. Now, if somebody were to get all the way here to Los Angeles, if this is available, then they would go into the 20 point spot. Second would get 15, then 10, and then five. And each turn you're here, you simply roll the yellow die, as we've already shown. Hopefully, in your case, creating a situation where the timer of the game is coming quicker and quicker, and you will score the most points. So at the end of the game, you're going to get points scored for where you are placement in Los Angeles, any of these tokens that you get, which may give you additional points. In addition, the cards that you're collecting will give you points. So the cactuses give you one point per card, but also is a tiebreaker during the game. The camera, whoever has the most points, will get two points per camera. Everyone else who has a camera will only get one point. Then you have the microphones. Whoever has the most microphones will get five points, and second place will get three. Fishing poles score in combinations. If you have two of them, you get three points. So for every two, if you had four, you would get six points, and so on and so on. There is also the car that will score. For every three cars you have, you will gain six points. When you add up your points from your cards, your points for being in Los Angeles, and any tokens that you may or may not have, that whoever has the most points will become the winner of the game. And that's how you play a Goofy Movie. A Goofy Movie? Who should buy this game? Fans of the Goofy Movie are going to love this, although there have been some changes to put the IP into the board game. It's not an exactly a nice hit with the IP. 
I think fans of that will enjoy it. If you're looking for a light family game, but you want something kind of mainstreamy with modern mechanisms, this is a good mix of both. If you're looking just for a Disney-themed family game, this could definitely be it. I think this is going to be a favorite for a lot. If you're just coming off of like mainstream roll and moves games, these rules might give you a little bit of a headache, but the rule book is really good, so don't give up and stick with it. Keep it for us.